Yeah, let's see if we can do this for some fun and games. A little video that has something to it. These are sassy chads. Years ago, they used to be important to fishing. Now with all the plastics on the market, they forgot all about this stuff. I got a bag of 100 sassy shads for 20 something dollars on eBay. Pretty good. And these are baby bass, are the colors on this. You can see they're the sassy shads. I even think there's little eyeballs. I even think that they have the Sassy Shad logo someplace on here, the Mr. Twister logo someplace. Now, when you when you get these, they're just mass produced, they shove them in a bucket and that's it. And a lot of time you'll notice, and these are swim baits. These are the original swim baits, unless you want to count grubs. These are the original paddle tail swim baits. Now, you see that? The tail's bent. See? Tail's bent. So can you use that? I mean, the thing's gonna swim. You know, who knows what it's gonna do? They usually don't run so nice. So what you do, this one has been treated. And how do I treat them? What I do is I'll take a pot of uh, simmering, simmering, actually bubbling water, and you put these in the, the, you hold them, and you swish them around, swish them around, swish them around, and the, the plastisol, look at that, look at that. The plastisol becomes like stress relieved, and much softer, so this tail, really works well and on these three inch baits you're gonna need three inch baits and you can see these are fairly <laughs> devastating with these sickle hooks and uh, I powder coat the jig heads myself because I just don't like the paint jobs you get They're real cheap and they chip these won't these are um, powder coated you do those in your oven so these now move very nicely. Let's see if we can get them both together here. <laughs> you can see the difference. <laughs> so you cook them up a little bit, like this one. And they move so nicely. I mean, they really move nice when you want to slow roll these things along. And catch some either crappie, bass, pike, who knows. Stripers will definitely jump on this stuff. Uh, the stuff that they got in the reservoirs, who knows, trout possibly. Uh, walleyes are definitely gonna jump this stuff. Sunnies will attempt. Did I say crappies, pickerel? Catfish, definitely. So, to repair some of your soft plastics, and if you're fishing with the big stuff, um, the, the big swim bait, so this is essential that you learn this, to boil these. You just boil them, swish them around, swish them around in the boiling water, in the boiling water, and you'll see the tail straighten out. Now we'll compare them again. There's the tail on that one. That's boiled, and it's nice and soft and wiggly. Not destroyed by any means. Now here's the one that's right out of the package. a big difference there probably doesn't look that appealing so once I'm finished boiling these and I don't do the, the whole bag of 100 to be useless they probably take a set again after sitting in the bag for you know a season so I'll take out a couple of these a half dozen or so and um, boil them up and heat treat them and you can see that is just it just does the plastic all really nice and it, it just heat treats them perfectly so and, and it'll do it on the bigger stuff the bigger boot tails the, the, the heart tails the boot tails it just fixes them right up so if you're fishing for crappie smallmouth whatever 
is going after these little shad things. Again, this color is baby bass. I figured there's baby bass always around in these ponds, so. These are very nice. Does that say uh, Mr. Twister right there? There's something. Yeah, it does. I think I can make out the M, Mr. Twister. So these are from the original mold, or somebody did a real good job hacking a hacking a mold out. So looking forward to using these. Right now we're going into the fall uh, routine. I'm going to try throwing some jigs and some uh, bigger worms. I got some. Uh, I got some 10 inch uh, worms and what do I got? Some 7 inch uh, zoom swamp monsters that are real nice. And the color that I've been using is green pumpkin for the worms. And I have some other. I have green pumpkin, I have white pearl, and. What the heck? And I have vermilion. Vermilion's dead in your face. Crazy orange. But this is something you should think about doing if you're fishing. And I think these are 16th of an ounce jigs. That's what I think they are. This really works well on the bigger, more expensive swim baits. And as the water gets cold, because they're this loose, they won't stiffen up. These are plastics and petroleum products. So the colder they get, the stiffer they get. Once you boil them, then treat them, stick them in the pot, swirl them around, swirl them around, swirl them around. They're gonna come out nice and soft. The, di the difference, you could feel it noticeably, is really nice. So, you may... Plenty of those babies. Oh yeah. The crappie. Look at that. You'd be surprised what you could spend for crappie equipment. There's, there's, right in this box, there's a small fortune. Just some of the little hardwares and stuff in here. There's a couple other ones I had stashed and fixed up. And you can see how nice and wiggly the tails are on these. These are Roadrunner heads. These things were... This is one of the ones I want to try throwing. These are tan things. They're too expensive for the Roadrunner heads. Companies wonder why they go bust and everybody makes their stuff in China. That's simple. You charge too much for plastisol. You're, you're, you're selling jobs down the toilet. Get the black blade on these. This, that's my crappie scent right there. Glows in the dark. Bunch of stuff here glows in the dark. But I wouldn't go out to that park by my house at night. I'd probably get killed by the Long Branch police. So you boil some water, a little pan of water, and uh swish them around and soften them up. You'll notice the tails come straight. Hold them upside down or have a little uh, thing of ice water. Little ice cold water. And once they're, once they cure, you got them in the hot water, hot water, you hold them. Oh, they look nice and straight. Dip them and hold them in the ice water for a couple seconds and they'll set straight. They'll take a nice set, uh, straight set. Uh, one of the sites that I use that I uh, sub to is called Tackle Advisors on YouTube. Guys, someplace in New Jersey, and he comes up with a lot of good reel reviews, lure reviews, rod reviews, line reviews. Uh, he goes to these iCast shows and comes up with new products and stuff like that. He also dissects reels in real time, so you can see what's in a specific reel, Shimano's. Abus, uh, Flugers, wh whatever he's got his hands on, Daiwas, rips them apart, shows you how to clean them, puts them back together. And he's got one of those mechanical type memories where um, he could rip something apart, 
and then just reverse the process and, and he ripped something apart, cleaned it all up, put real good lube in it, changed the bearings out, put it all back together, and it runs beautiful. So um, I learned that from Tackle Advisors. He was doing bigger baits than these, but I'm looking forward to throwing these things on some, uh, I don't know, this small, maybe some four pound test. I think just look at that. How many times have you bought stuff like this and you take them out of the bag and they're stiff as steel? You got a bag of worthless stuff there. So anyway, that's the best I can do. Tackle tips from, from the TPH. Enjoy yourself, folks. Make sure you have your fishing licenses. Make sure you obey all of the fishing rules and play safe so that Everybody gets a chance at this. Look at all of these jig heads, all of these. I've powder coated all of these. All of these, not these. These are these are some of my favorite, favorite, favorite crappie jigs. And in this pattern, by the way, this pattern was absolutely killer. This color is amazing. So I got them, and I have this one mixed in with these. Anybody that fishes would know exactly what that is. They look like shad dorts. They're actually crappie and trout magnets. The only difference in the crappie and trout magnets is the size, like 64th and 32nd. So you order some small ones. And you order a bunch of uh, crappie magnet and trout magnet tails. But you get the stuff, when, when you can get the stuff, buy it in bulk if you can. Instead of getting 10 hooks or whatever, five hooks to a pack. You might as well choke up the cake and try and pick yourself up 50, 100. There's probably a couple hundred right here and I got more jigs coming that uh, I'll be working on in the next two weeks. As a matter of fact, I just got notified uh, from the eBay that um, the order for my um, stand-up jig heads, which I'll be using with some uh, crawfish uh, imitations, uh, are on their way. So I'll powder coat all of them. And maybe I'll do a little thing on the powder coat and show you how easy it is, show you how nice the jig, how nice the jigs come out. They come out perfect. They come out beautiful. They just come out really nice. And they're chip resistant too. So you can hit rocks. Most of the ones that you get like in tackle shops or Walmart or Kmart, wherever you're getting your stuff from, you'll notice the paint chips off of those jig heads and you're always looking at it like, ah, shit, I wish I had a white jig head, I wish I had a red jig head, I wish I had a whatever it is colored jig head. And uh, they're all chipped off. These, these don't. I've used these things for walleyes and beat the living death out of these jigs. Not these jigs. Twister tails with these heads on them. And that's constantly in the rocks. And I've used, uh, if I don't break them off, I'll use them until the hooks are dull, until the hooks don't uh, exist anymore. So that's just a little TPH tip. These are beautiful poppers, by the way. These. What do they call these? They're rocket poppers. I think that's that. Let me get my eyeball straight now. Yeah, Rocket Bobber. And I think these are Bill Lewis. And they had this little feature on them. I guess that little feature right there is for taking the hooks out. You take your bobber and you use that click to disgouge the hook. And the fish, that was a very good idea. These are glow in the dark um, things here fairly crazy for floats you're talking five bucks a piece for floats it, it 
token five bucks a piece, especially for, and you could cast these at a brick wall. <laughs> and believe it or not, these are these are made in the United States, and they they issue you a lifetime warranty with these, which is amazing. I mean, what do they do? They said first of all, they send out a guy with a ladder and see if they can't get the uh, floats out of the trees first. Well, here's your float. How do, you, how do you do that? Well, I lost the damn bobber. I guess you gotta send back pieces of it. The colors are real nice on those. You can get those. You can get those on Amazon. But I found that uh, eBay sometimes has a better selection of certain things uh, than Amazon does. Man, I made up a ton of those uh, J heads. The red glows in the dark. The yellow is just uh, fluorescent, fluoresces, ultraviolet fluorescent. So, uh, and the green glows in the dark. The green glows the best in the dark. The red glows nicely in the dark. So, hopefully this information has been uh, of some use. And again, I'd rather be doing this than kvetching and cavelling about the things that might be or had taken place so I'd much much rather be fishing I wish I wish I wish I had a fish but you can see by the, you can see by the, the the gloss on these jigs how nice they came out they just came out so well some of them are real nice too some of them are real good quality jigs Nice bronze hooks. And what you do is you heat these up with your uh, alcohol lamp. You buy a little alcohol lamp. And you just heat them up, heat them up, heat them up. And you dump them in that, um, that Protec, that powder coat. And because the jig is hot, the powder coat sticks to it. And then once they've cooled down and you've lined them up on the racks of your stove, or uh, what the hell, toaster oven, which would work real nice. Uh, you put them in a toaster oven at, uh, I think it's 400 degrees for a half hour. I leave them in there for about 45 minutes an hour. And what that does is it cures and seals these very nicely. As a matter of fact, anybody um, that does uh, automotive work, custom automotive work, will know about uh, powder coating stuff. They use it on frames and a lot of suspension parts. So it's flexible. And... It can take the abuse of uh, a road. I think these are sixteenth of an ounce. That is right there, one sixteenth of an ounce. Even on the little tiny ones. They here. This is a little tiny one. You can see that the tails work that much better on these. So you drag some of the small, and, and I guarantee it. You find the right color when you're out trout fishing, stocker trout. They'll jump right on these damn things. I haven't used them for trout yet. I've used them for bass and crappies, and I've got no complaints. I've got no complaints. And again, you bite the hooks. You can get a hundred of these jigs and a jar of powder, a couple jars of powder. I have a, a glow in the dark green, glow in the dark red. I have um, uh, the yellow, black. And uh, what I have yellow, yellow, green, red, and black. And I also have, which I may play with uh, when I do these new jigs up, uh, the stand up jigs that I'm getting, quarter ounce stand ups. I may do them, some of them with the ruby slipper powder coat. That looks beautiful. The way they come out, it's amazing. And that's going to be for bigger law, uh, lures for stand-up jigs are usually for something like a crawfish rig or, um, oh, these are so beautiful, these are a little crappie lures. Who remembers Robbie Hosoffel? Robbie Hosoffel <laughs> outfished me like a thousand to one. <laughs> crappie fishing years and years and years ago 
over by, um, oh, geez, where the heck is that? That restaurant used to be, uh, Weston's Mill Road. What the hell do they call that? Farrington Lake. Over at Farrington Lake, we were fishing right by one of the bridges over there. And Robbie was yanking one crappie after another one. It was pretty good. I think I might have gotten one. So, uh, that, hopefully this information is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in there. Put the questions in there. Give me a thumbs up. Share. Uh, this isn't the only tackle box that I have. I have a bunch of other ones set up for, for different disciplines. And... Um, You'll get a, a chance to see it. And these boxes are flambeau with um, these zinc compound anti-rust separators. They come in handy. They really do. I don't have problems rust issues with my uh, boxes. So enjoy yourself. Play safely. And we'll be getting back to you. Enjoy.